Today, we shall understand the measures of central tendency and dispersion. We have already studied techniques of data collection and data presentation. Huge data is considerably condensed by classification, tabulation, graphs and diagrams. Classification and tabulation of data are very useful but not sufficient to provide the summary of data. We require a value which condense the entire data into single numerical value. A measure capable of representing the important characteristics of the data is known as measure of average or measure of central tendency. While measure of dispersion indicate the extent to which individual observations fall away from the central value. The measure of dispersion which is expressed in terms of original units of data is known as absolute measure of dispersion. For comparison of two or more data, relative measure of dispersion is required. Relative measure is obtained as ratio or percentage. Thus, it is independent of units of measurement. Central tendency gives a typical value of the variable, while dispersion gives how much variability there is in the values of the variable. When describing the values of single variable, it is customary to report on both the central tendency and the dispersion. Not all measures of central tendency and not all measures of dispersion can be used to describe the values of cases on every variable. Depending on the type of the data and the purpose of the study, measures of central tendency and dispersion should be used. Now let us understand the different measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode. Mean is based on actual observations, median is located at the center of the data and mode is the observations repeated frequently. We shall now look at the formulas of mean for different types of data. So mean for ungrouped data, x bar is sigma x upon n that is total of all observations divided by the number of observations. Now for discrete data, x bar is sigma fx upon sigma f or as a shortcut formula you can also say x bar is equal to a plus sigma fd upon sigma f where d is a deviation from assumed mean so that is d equal to x minus a and for continuous data x bar is a plus sigma fd upon sigma f into c where d equal to x minus a upon c where c is the class interval. Similarly, we will look at the formula for median also. Ungrouped data, it is n plus 1 upon tooth observation. Now, you have to understand over here that the first the observations need to be arranged in ascending order and then we have to utilize the formula as n plus 1 upon tooth observation. Similarly, for discrete data, it is n plus 1 upon tooth observation. And for continuous data, it is L plus N upon 2 minus cumulative frequency that is CF upon frequency into class interval that is C. Now for mode, for ungrouped data, it is an observation which is repeated maximum number of times or in other words, frequently occurring observation. For discrete data, it is an observation having highest frequency. And for continuous data, it is L plus F1 minus F0 upon F2 into C, where F1 is the frequency of the modal class, F0 is the frequency of the previous class, and F2 is the frequency of the succeeding class. Now we shall understand about the different measures of dispersion, range, quartile deviation, mean deviation, and standard deviation. Range is based on extreme observations. Quartile deviation is based on the central 50 percentage of observations. Mean deviation is based on the absolute deviation, while standard deviation is based on squared deviation. We shall now look at the different formulas of measures of dispersion. The first is range. For ungrouped data, it is xh minus xl, that is highest observation minus the lowest observation. Same case with the discrete data also, it is xh minus xl 
that is highest observation minus the lowest observation. And for continuous data, it is UL minus LL, that is upper limit minus the lower limit. We will so now look at the formulas for the quartile deviation. For ungrouped data, discrete data and continuous data, the formula is same, that is Q3 minus Q1 upon 2, where Q1 is the first quartile and Q3 is the third quartile for the given data. Now we shall look for the formula for the mean deviation. For the mean deviation for ungrouped data, it is sigma modulus of x minus x bar upon n. For discrete data, it is sigma f multiplied by modulus of x minus x bar divided by n. And same way for continuous data, it is sigma f multiplied by modulus of x minus x bar upon n. And the most important measure now, standard deviation. For ungrouped data, it is square root of sigma x square upon n minus sigma x upon n whole square. For discrete data, it will be square root of sigma fx square upon n minus sigma fx upon n whole square. Similarly, for continuous data, it will be root of sigma fx square upon n minus sigma fx upon n whole square. Now, we have to understand over here for continuous data, x will be the mid value of the classes that are given. While in the case of discrete data, x represents the actual observation. There are many more formulas that can be derived for mean deviation and standard deviation. Let us understand all these measures by an example. Following are the daily sales of garment showroom. Fine, mean, median and mode. Also calculate range, quartile deviation, mean deviation and standard deviation. Now these are the daily sales for the 7 different days. For day 1, 51,000 rupees, day 2, 53,000 rupees, day 3, 49,000 rupees, day 4, 50,000 rupees, day 5, 51,500, day 6, 49,500, day 7, 51,000. We will begin with calculating mean and we know it is a discrete data so x bar will be equal to sigma x upon n. That is we need to take total of all the observations divided by the number of observations. So for this data, it will be 51,000 plus 53,000 plus 49,000 plus 50,000 plus 51,500 plus 49,500 plus 51,000 divided by the number of observations that is 7. So this comes to 3,55,000 upon 7 and which comes to 50,714.29 rupees. We can say that the mean daily sales is 50,714.29 rupees. For median, as I said before, the observations need to be arranged in ascending order, that is in increasing order. So the 7 days sales that was given, we will now arrange in ascending order. So the observations will be 49,000, increasing after that 49,500, 50,000, 51,000, 51,500, Again, 51,500 and then 53,000. Now, the formula for median is n plus 1 upon tooth observation. Now, n is 7. So, 7 plus 1 upon 2. So, that comes to 8 upon 2. That is fourth observation. We can look at the data that the 51,000 is your fourth observation. So, the median daily sales is rupees 51,000. We shall now find mode. For ungrouped data, mode is a frequently occurring observation in the data. Here, 51,500 is occurring maximum number of times, that is twice. So, the modal daily sales is 51,500. Now, we can find different measures of dispersion and we'll start with range. Range is the difference between the highest and the lowest observation in the data, that is r is equal to xh minus xl. We know in the data the highest observation is 53,000 and the lowest observation is 49,000. So 53,000 minus 49,000 it comes to 4,000. So we can say range of daily sales is rupees 4,000. Now for quartile deviation again we need to arrange the observation in ascending order and as we have seen before the order will be 49,000. 49,500, 50,000, 51,000, 51,500, again 51,500 and 53,000. For quartile deviation, we will first calculate Q1 
and then Q3 using that both values will calculate quartile deviation. So Q1 is n plus 1 upon 4th observation, we know n is 7, so 7 plus 1 is 8 upon 4 that comes to the second observation. In the data you can look at that the second observation is 49,500. So Q1 comes to 49,500. Now for Q3, it is 3 into n plus 1 upon 4th observation, n we know it is 7. So 7 plus 1 upon 4 it comes to 2, 2 into 3 that is a 6th observation. In the data we can see that the 6th observation is 51,500. Thus Q1 comes to 49,500 and Q3 comes to 51,500. Using this both values we will now calculate quartile deviation and quartile deviation QD is equal to Q3 minus Q1 upon 2. So that is equal to 51,500 minus 49,500 divided by 2. So that is 2000 upon 2 that comes to 1000. Thus, quartile deviation of daily sales is rupees 1000. Now, mean deviation. Mean deviation is sigma modulus of x minus x bar upon n. We shall calculate it using the following table. The first column here represents the daily sales that we have given in the data that is 51,000, 53,000 and so on. We have already calculated x bar which comes to 50,714.29. Using that we will find out the second column that is x minus x bar. Our first value of x is 51,000 and the x bar value is 50,714.29. So x minus x bar comes to 285.71. For the second value of x that is 53,000, x minus x bar will be 53,000 minus 50,714.29 that comes to 2285.71. For the third observation which is 49,000 that is 49,000 minus 50,714.29 it comes a negative value so the value is minus 1714.29. Similarly we can calculate for other observations also. Now the last column and the main column is modulus of x minus x bar. We all know modulus means it ignores the sign. The positive value remains positive and negative values are converted into a positive value. So our first value of x minus x bar was 285.71 which is a positive value. So that remains as 285.71. Similarly the second. Here note that the third value was minus 1714.29 which is the negative value. Now if you take a modulus it converts into a positive value so it comes to 1714.29. So on we can calculate for all the observations that are given and we need to find out the total which comes to 7285.71. This total is called sigma modulus of x minus x bar. So now the formula for mean deviation as we have seen before is sigma modulus of x minus x bar upon n the numerator we have already calculated in the previous table, it is 7285.71 divided by n that is number of observation, here it is 7. So it comes to 7285.71 divided by 7 which comes down to 1040.82 rupees. Thus mean deviation from mean of daily sales is rupees 1040.82. Now again, as I said, the important measure that is standard deviation. The formula for standard deviation that we will use in this sum is square root of sigma d square upon n minus sigma d upon n whole square. We shall calculate it using following table. A is an assumed mean and we can assume any value. For this sum, let us take A equal to 50,000. We shall understand the table now. The first column is x that is the daily sales that was given in the data 51,000, 53,000, 49,000 and so on. The second column is d that is x minus a which is also called deviation from assumed mean. a we have assumed here as 50,000. So for the first value of x which is 51,000 it will be 51,000 minus 50,000 that comes to 1,000. Second value of x is 53,000. So the d value will be 53,000 minus 50,000 it comes to 3,000. The third value of x is 49,000. So 49,000 minus 50,000 it comes to minus 1,000 and so on. All other values can be obtained and we have to take a total which comes to 5,000. And the last column is d square. d square is nothing else but 
the square of the D column. So the first value of D is 1000 and we have to take a square so that comes to 10 lakhs. Next is 3000, we have to take a square that comes to 90 lakhs and so on. For all other values of D, we will find out the square. So now the total of D square will be 145 lakhs. So formula now, S is root of sigma D square upon N minus sigma D upon N whole square. We have seen before the value of sigma D square will substitute here divided by 7 minus same way sigma D upon N that is 5000 upon 7 and take a square of it. It simplifies to square root of 156128.37. After taking a square root, we will get 1249.49 rupees. Thus, the standard deviation of daily sales is rupees 1249.49. So this is how the different measures of central tendency and dispersion can be obtained. Now the question arises: which measure to use? which measure to select and use depend on the variable's level of measurement. The table below gives us a big picture for this chapter. The statistics we gain as we move from nominal to ordinal to interval and ratio are in the table. Let us understand the table now. The first column is a level of measurement. There are three different level of measurements, nominal, ordinal and the third is interval ratio. Nominal is classified. Nominal means a label which is simply classified. Ordinal means it is arranged from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. Interval and ratio are the values which can be measured, which is quantified. Second column is a measure of central tendency, which is ideal for a particular level of measurement. And same way the last column, it is measure of dispersion, which is ideal for a particular level of measurement. From the table, we can now understand that for a nominal level of measurement, mode is the ideal measure of central tendency, while quartile deviation is the ideal measure of dispersion. For ordinal data, median and mode should be used, and for measure of dispersion, range and quartile deviation should be used. For interval and ratio, all measures of central tendency and all measures of dispersion can be used according to the requirement of the problem. Modes are relatively simple in nature and only require that the values that make up a variable is different. That is the property that values of nominal, ordinal and interval ratio variables all have. Therefore, we can calculate mode for all the three levels of measurement. Median and range provide more information about the scores on variable, but this statistics only makes sense if the values of the variable have rank order. Now since rank order is a property possessed by the values of ordinal and interval ratio measure but not by the nominal variables, we may only calculate median, range and interquartile range for ordinal and interval ratio variables. Mean, variance and standard deviation provide still more information about the score on variables. But this statistics require the values of the variable to form a numeric scale with a fixed unit of measurement. Since only interval ratio variable have this property, mean, variance and standard deviation may only be calculated for interval ratio variables. Usually, we should use a statistics that makes the fullest use of the information packed in the variable's value. Here are some standard approaches. For a nominal variable, report, mode and just few valid percents. For ordinal variable, report the median, the minimum and the maximum. And for interval ratio variables, report mean and the standard deviation. The exceptional has to do with interval ratio variables whose distribution are badly skewed. A skewed distribution occurs when there are a few scores on variable but only on one direction. For example, when all but a few students score in 80s and 90s in an exam but those few other scores are below 50. The marks distribution is negatively skewed. 
same way when most employees in a company receives annual salary between 5 million and 6 million but few executives receive salary excess of 6 million the salary distribution is positively skewed the extreme cases pull the mean in that direction the result is that the mean though mathematically correct is not a good measure of central tendency the median however is not so sensitive to extreme values the addition of one or two extreme cases has only a minor effect on median but they have a major effect on the mean therefore report the median instead of mean when the distribution is badly skewed let us summarize the whole chapter a measure capable of representing the important characteristics of the data is known as measure of averages. As such an average will have a tendency to be somewhere at the center of the data, it is known as measure of central tendency. Mean, median and mode are measures of central tendency. Measure of dispersion indicates the extent to which individual observations fall away from central value range quartile deviation mean deviation and standard deviation are measures of dispersion thank you